Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Reporter's Notebook. This is our Wednesday edition of Reporter's Notebook. And for those of you who have never watched a Reporter's Notebook before, it's actually been quite a while since we've done some of these, so we're getting right back into the groove of it. And Reporter's Notebook is a pretty fun segment we get to do here at WNCT, sort of towards the end of our workday. We get to bring in some coworkers in here to the digital studio and dive a little deeper into the stories they cover each and every day for you guys and dive a little into the behind the scenes of what it's like to be a reporter here at WNCT. So we are joined today in the digital studio by Miss Erin Jenkins. How are you doing today? I'm good, Emily. How are you? I'm doing good. good. And Erin is one of our night side reporters. So while I work, you know, 930 to 630 on any given day, she works from around two o'clock to around 11, 1130 at night. So our schedules kind of don't line up all that much, but we do get to see each other. So fun. <laughs> it's nice catching up with you. Absolutely. <laughs> and so today, the story that you covered is something, a term that has been kind of circulating around in the past couple of weeks with uh, medical experts. So you were talking about Florona today. So explain to us what that is for those who might not know. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a term that's been, you know, spreading, as you said, across the country. And actually, I think we have um, a confirmed case in North Carolina, more towards like the Charlotte area. But it's actually an infection of both the flu and COVID at the same time. Um, the doctor I spoke to today is a professor at ECU's Brody School of Medicine. And he's basically was really honest, saying it's really rare for this to happen. And he doesn't really see um, a lot of people in eastern North Carolina kind of can uh, in, get, being infected with both of these viruses at the same time, but that it is a possibility um, that's out there for us. Absolutely. And you said they haven't had any confirmed cases in our area just yet, right? That is correct. Um, he did say that, you know, when you're like an inpatient and they're going into the hospital for something, you might be tested for both the flu and COVID. So that is a scenario when you might be able to tell if you do have both. Um, but if you're just going to get a regular COVID test, say at Biden's drive through site or one of their other testing sites, you're really only being tested for COVID. So you kind of wouldn't be able to know whether you have flu Rona, I guess. Um, so it's kind of not really being tested for right now, but but that it, it is a possibility, like I said. Absolutely. And I even know, you know, in, do, in doing some reading on this, you know, like you said, you know, going to get a COVID test, you're not going to be able to find out if you also have the flu. So in order to even find out, you know, if you have something like that, you do have to kind of sort of go out of your way to get both a COVID test and a flu test separately, you know, possibly even at two different locations, you know, if that's the case. But, um, you know, it's good to hear that there's not any cases, you know, active cases in our area. This is something that, you know, is a little, it's, daunting almost a little bit you know i know in, in you speaking with some medical experts you know they don't really know you know the severity of it or things like that or how this can really affect people but just to know that oh my gosh you can get like flu and covid yeah. at the same time is like oh my gosh right okay yeah <laughs> it's kind of interesting he said you know in these next two to three weeks are kind of going to be the peak time, hopefully, that we're seeing with Omicron and flu also. So hopefully we're going to stay vigilant uh, for a couple more weeks, wearing masks, uh, making sure, you know, we're out there getting vaccines and boosted up. Then we uh, hopefully should be OK in three weeks at least. So absolutely. And I know another guidance that's recently come out as well is the KN95 masks and really pushing that. I know we actually just got like a, <laughs> a, a shipment into our station for people who wanted to use those as opposed to cloth masks. So I think that's a really interesting aspect of it as well just to know that hey we're ramping up back with these you know these more protective masks because this is a possibility so Definitely. yeah Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Erin, for talking about your story. I kind of want to, you know, talk about some more fun things now at this point, you know, get a little personal. So what have you been up to the past couple of weeks? You know, we've had some crazy weather here in North Carolina. So That's you, true. you know, gotten out and gotten to enjoy the, you know, either extreme cold or the 70 degrees on yeah. random days. Well, actually, I got to go home a week after Christmas. So that was oh, really good. nice. And then I guess it was last Monday. I was actually driving back to Greenville for work. Um, as you said, I don't come until 2.30. So I was driving Monday morning. And let me just tell you, I drove through the snow the whole way here. So I'm I'm done with snow. Uh, once I got here, it was a little flurries in Greenville. I think the storm literally just like the radar carried over me the whole time I was driving. So I'm ready for warm weather. I know we might see some snow this weekend, but I'm, right. I'm ready for those warm temperatures. Oh, uh, see, I'm, well, it's okay. So I'm like one of those people that if it's cold, like there has to be snow on the ground and like feet I, yeah, of it. I understand. But if it's not like that, you're right. I want, you know, 70 <laughs> degrees. I'm ready for the summertime. Yep. 
I agree. Ready to get back out in the water and do all the fun things Eastern North Carolina has to offer. So coming Absolutely. up soon, hopefully. <laughs> I know, really. And did you do any fun winter activities while it has been cold? Did you get to go like ice skating or any kind of fun things like that? I'm trying to think. I haven't yet. Um, looking ahead, actually, I've kind of played with my friends. I think next week, um, the city of Greenville is hosting an event at Wildwood Park um, where they have an ice skating rink. Um, so just, a, I guess, a teaser, I guess, for an event conversation coming up but me and yeah. my friends have already planned to go um just i think you get like an hour on the the rink and some hot chocolate and all that fun stuff so hopefully coming up soon we'll be doing some winter stuff <laughs> why did i not know about now this you know. oh my gosh okay well now i now need to know. sign up and get some yeah. friends to go i might tag yeah. along with you yes, please do <laughs> that sounds so fun yeah. oh my gosh well yeah great preview for that and maybe a possible story idea exactly. in the next upcoming weeks yep. i love that Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for taking the time out of your day because I know you still got some work to get done for <laughs> this reporter's notebook. I really appreciate it diving a little deeper into that story with us and just jumping on here and having a little chit chat. Yeah. Always appreciate it. Thanks, Emily. It's been fun. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much, Erin. And thank you guys for watching another edition of Reporter's Notebook. And we'll see you next time.